Dudes, what is happening? This is Trent, and today I'm gonna to be covering just sort of some surface level stuff, scraping the surface of user interface and uh, and uh, kind of creating a pause screen for the indie game I'm working on called Aikida the Scrap Hunter. So to give you a baseline, let's take a look at where the game's at right now. First of all, I've got these temporary objects in the game world where you can pick them up, but uh, let's take a look at our current pause screen. What do we got here? Well, we've got our list of options that the player has uh, that he can cycle through, and uh, I'm not gonna go into the, the behind the scenes code of how any of this works. I'm gonna focus specifically on mock-up. And so we need this information to display, but we also need to showcase when the player has picked up these objects. And these are gonna be key cards and uh, a sword. Uh, and then let's go ahead and grab these real quick. And these are gonna be uh, key cards. Let's take a look here. You can see where I've got these temporary key cards that show up in the user interface. I haven't positioned them or anything like that, but the icon shows when you've picked up the object. So this lets the player know that, hey, you've got that number three key card, so you can go through that number three door. Otherwise, you won't be able to. Our current pause screen is just okay, but we need a lot more information on there. Let's figure out how we're gonna make it sexy. When I'm working out the layout of a UI or something like that, I try to write out like a list of what are my most important information that I need the player to know about. And in this case, I need to communicate to the player how many keys he's got. Uh, I need to communicate to the player whether or not he has a weapon. Um, I don't know yet if there's gonna be a changeable inventory, but right now I'm assuming that there's just gonna be, do you have it, yes or no? Uh, does the player have access to the tank in the game? Uh, and does the player have the boots? Now, a couple of these items may get lost. Some of them may end up on other pages, but that's what we need to figure out. It's really just kind of like identifying the problem. What is the problem that we're trying to solve here? But then I start to like work out, well, okay, so, so can we make it graphically interesting? Can we show a close up of the character? Because we never really get to see what he looks like close up. With these little notes and doodles, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to group uh, information. So for instance, like the keys end up kind of grouped together uh, and I'm going to need a window for more general information. How much inventory are we going to need to show? This is just really brainstorming high level. Like what are some rough, loose ideas? I'm digging up like screenshots from Link to the Past or other games that have a similar type of level of inventory. And I'm kind of cross-referencing to see uh, am I going to crowd my screen with too much information? I did pull up a lot of reference, particularly from something like say, for example, uh, Mega Man Legends, just as a frame of reference. And YouTube's really a fantastic resource for this because if you don't wanna fire up the game or anything like that, you can just pull up a walkthrough and, and fast forward to someone who's gotten to the menu and see how the interface uh, navigates. And they did some interesting stuff where they have multiple pages. So by hitting the, the shoulder buttons, you'd be able to uh, sort of jump to different pages and it would tell you very clearly what page you're looking at. But I don't have as much inventory as Mega Man Legends and I don't want to have multiple pages. So I'm going to do something a little bit simpler that has all the information I need on one page, hopefully. I really want to make sure that uh, my user interface is consistent throughout the whole game. So I'm going to load up the game and I want to make sure that I'm pulling a lot of the same elements so that it feels like we're in the same game. We're going to be using even this screen uh, or this, this little panel here. Uh, this little window. We're going to use the same language. And one of the common trends that I'm seeing in game development lately is a much more streamlined, kind of minimalist interface. Uh, some of the older games from the 90s would get very pixelated and detailed, and you'd have little corner pieces that have a lot of edging and materials and things like that. And I think that the modern style, especially when you look at games like Breath of the Wild, are just sleek and streamlined. There's not a lot of fluff or, or anything like that, but it still supports the theme of the game. And that's something that I'm going to be trying to uh, I'm going to be trying to capture uh, this feel, the same feel that you see on this screen. I'm going to be trying to capture in that pause screen as well. But I'm going to try to add to it and compound on it. So I'm going to use a lot of these same windows, the graphics for these windows, as a starting point uh, in my Photoshop mockup. All right, let's leap on over to Photoshop and using that frame that I had as a base. Uh, and also using the screenshot of the background that I had from my, my current pause screen, sort of just as like a base background. I'm moving frames around based on my little mock-ups, based on my little thumbnails. I wanted to try something that was very symmetrical, uh, something where it's almost just like a list of things going down the middle. 
I did like the idea of maybe showing the character a little bit more, but he got cut out um, in the initial sketches while I tried this symmetrical thing. And one of the things that you'll find about user interfaces that they, they don't uh, come together your first try. It's not like doing a painting because you also have to test the interactivity of it and you have to test how players are interacting with it, how players are utilizing that interface if the information is clear to them. So for example, when we were doing Diablo 3, there was one guy working on the interface for five or six years and uh, it just kept going through changes and change after change after change. And I don't know how the man kept his sanity, quite honestly, it was ridiculous. Uh, but you, the whole thing is, is you just have to keep trying lots and lots of different things. Uh, I did like the idea of some kind of a title along the top, utilizing uh, some of the, uh, the same fonts, of course, throughout the whole game. And this symmetrical layout would have been a substantial uh, uh, improvement already, but uh, I did. I really wanted to get the shot of the main character in in the scene. I want the player to be able to see him, uh, see what their character looks like. A nice little close up. Ideally, I might add a little bit of animation to him, but uh, I don't want to distract from what's going on in the information of the menus. I also wanted to make sure that I created a state of a each one of these locations being empty and one being full. I wasn't sure how much of the information needed to be displayed. Ultimately, I decided that we don't need to see a lot of the gear. I think I can streamline it without that. I was playing around with the idea of adding the tank in, but ultimately, um, I tend to believe in a system of design by subtraction. I tend to believe in less is more. Uh, try to focus on what the essential important information is and cut out anything that's ancillary or just uh, just stuffy, anything that's crowding the place. So this is where the layout kind of landed um, with my first iteration, my first pass. And of course, I've got everything broken up on different layers and I could go in here and change out the background color if I wanted. And of course, like every object is on its own layer so I can move these elements around pretty easily. I've organized a lot of my text and other elements into folders within Photoshop. So it's really easy to group something and move, move the whole part around. Uh, and what I'm evaluating here is the organization of all of the objects. And one of the things that I liked, well, I really liked that the main character is uh, is represented. I think that's cool. I think the this is definitely like a cool win. I do really feel it was important to indicate the character's progress throughout the game. This is the stage progress and this is the overall game progress, but we run into a little bit of a problem with where this is located. So throughout the rest of the game, the menu that the player interacts with is always down here in the bottom right corner, and this is just totally blocking that. So I'm gonna to have to move a few things around whilst simultaneously keeping a lot of the same elements. I felt like I could probably do a better job of clustering all the windows together a little bit better as well. And one of the things that I did wanna mention um, before I move things around is that notice how I've got an empty version and a full version for each of my elements so that you could see uh, what it'll look like when it's full as, as opposed to when it's empty. And uh, this is important, I think, because you're going to want it to look good when you've got a full inventory and you're going to want it to look good when it's got an empty inventory. But that said, uh, let's work on moving a few things around to see if we can figure out a more efficient way to get what we're seeing here down here so it's consistent with the rest of the game and see if we can organize all the other elements uh, within the scene, uh, this, this screen to be a little bit more efficient. Let's fire up the turbo. When you're doing your Photoshop mock-up, like you're really gonna see it here, why it's so important to have everything on its own layer. If this were flattened, I'd have to completely redraw it and that just does not work. Uh, but you're already seeing how lining things up uh, this way is already just tightening up how everything's fitting together. I'm digging it a lot more. There's a little bit more of an obvious influence from the Mega Man Legends thing here with the title above each of the of, of the windows. Uh, I did also uh, have to adjust the scale of a couple of my text things. You want to make sure that if all of your labels for your windows are a singular size, that's consistent throughout. 
Uh, also readjusting uh, some just minor details, little corner edges and things, make sure it looks nice and neat. At this point, I'm feeling a lot more confident about the design. So that's when I start to refine things. I don't really like to dig into details until I'm pretty confident about where it's at and where it's going. And then I dropped in my uh, different colored background from the current free, uh, the current pause screen just to test it. And I think it, it works out pretty well. But I'm going to continue to try a couple of little different uh, color variations on that background before I really finalize it. So this is where the design layout has kind of landed. Uh, as you can tell, I've done a change to the background color. I felt like it would give it a little bit more contrast and fit a little bit more with the rest of the UI of the rest of the game, such as the title screen. Uh, if that background has a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a bluish gray uh, instead of the red, uh, because mm, the red uh, just well it, it makes the rest of the red pop out less this makes that red really pop out nicely so you can see which of these elements you have selected a lot of good information here I do kind of wish that the character was next to his weapon rather than the stage info being in the middle uh, and I might go through another another iteration uh, with that but I feel like this is a good uh, base point for establishing a lot of my other UI elements uh, so if I do decide to add the gear, I might add that here, for instance. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet, but as I said, it's really just setting like a baseline with the core information that the player needs to know at this point in the game. So let's break it apart, try to drop it into the game and see how it looks. So I wanna keep this video focused on the, the process of mocking it up more so than the implementation. I don't wanna dig into like teaching you how to code in Game Maker or anything like that. But I, I'm dropping it into Game Maker Studio, which is the program that I'm using to, to make the Aikida game. And uh, just testing it out here, it looks pretty good. I've got that background set to like a 0.8 opacity. So it's not a fully, not a fully opa opaque background. You can still see some of the gameplay space uh, and then a little bit of transparency behind it. But everything else is, seems to be lining up. We've got all of our keys are working individually. And uh, not too shabby, not too shabby at all. I think it looks so much better than what it looked like before, and it has so much more essential, valuable information for the player to uh, to understand his progress throughout the game, which is exactly our intention. So mission accomplished, at least for now. As with everything, it's gonna go through some more iteration. I certainly hope that you enjoyed this little peek behind the curtain on how I put together a uh, UI and how I mock it up and put it into the game. As you can see, there's a lot of planning that needs to go into UI, a lot more than most paintings and things like that. If you have questions or suggestions, of course, please leave those in the comment section below. If you're interested in learning more about how I paint and how I draw or even how to use Photoshop, I've got tons of tutorials from beginner to pro over on my Gumroad channel. I certainly go check those out. It, it definitely helps me out a lot, of course, with keeping up with doing more tutorials and uh, insights like this into uh, the projects that I'm working on. Don't forget to subscribe. I want to thank you so much for stopping by. And uh, dudes, I will catch y'all manana bon. Ciao, baby. Oh.